I've used everything in the book at this thing to get all the rust off. And I mean, it's, you know, on this side, it's like 95%. On the other side, there's some areas that are a little rough. And honestly, like I was going at this stuff and it just wasn't coming off. And I mean, when I say going at it, I was digging in. Sanders, drum sanders, strip discs, angle grinders. <laughs> and so, is this good enough? No, it's not good enough. However, I'm probably over eight hours in on this. And yes, it is my test panel, so. But if it was anything else, I would have been done with it in like an hour, two hours max. And there's just a point where you kind of throw in the towel and say, you know, this is, good. this is getting. So if the whole thing looks like this, I would do a epoxy primer, uh, a little bit of build primer, make this look pretty if it's going to be seen. Which, I don't know, it's not really going to be seen, but maybe. Uh, it's kind of behind the grill, so I'm not sure how much you would see it. And, uh, in fact, you might see the inside. Because it's probably starting from here underneath and then going up. So you'd probably see the inside, which, of course, is the worst part. Uh, but if you build primer and just make it look a little bit nicer, that'd be great. Um, so, it's been a little bit interesting. Um understanding what tools work better than others. Uh, I will say though, that this, this is an extreme case and I'm not really walking away with anything definitive, like, Oh, this was the magic thing because there was no magic thing on this. You know, I used the drum on the wide parts. Uh, then I ended up using the strip disc strip disc couldn't get into these. So I got my little angle grinder out, but that couldn't get all the angles. And so, you know, like, it just got crazy. And then as I was doing the phosphoric acid, which man came a long way after that. Um, you know, I still got out the 80 grit and was hitting it while the acid was on it and hitting areas and seemed to actually come off a little better while I was doing that. But, uh, so what does that mean? Well, that means at this point, like I'm done, I'm not going to go any further with this. Um, so at this point, I'm going to hammer this out because some of the flanges and stuff are a little bit jacked and get this to make sure it fits right in the van. Kind of bend everything out because, you know, you can see like that's not straight. Um, and then I think I'm going to do a, I believe it would be called a converter to where you spray on and it actually turns the rust into primer. And I think I'll be able to do that. I don't know if I could do that on just raw metal. Like it might have to be like a crap load of rust, which means I could have done that right from the beginning, but that's not, that's not restoration. That's covering it up. <laughs> so, uh, so I'll, I'll have to double check some of that, but, um, you know, if, if not an encapsulator or something like that, but then I still want to do other stuff on top of it. And so that's the thing that I kind of have to go through and do the research to see what will stick, what won't. Every manufacturer has a different, um, philosophy, chemical reaction, yada, yada, yada. And so as I go through this, it's like, Oh, if I use this epoxy, epoxy primer, I could do pretty much anything I want. If I use this one, I can't do acid etching, which is what I just did. Um, I can't do this. I can't do that. And so it's just been like, you think you have your formula down and then it's all thrown away by some TDS sheet that you're reading that says, no, you can't do that. And it's like, well, everybody else can. <laughs> so, so, you know, and then you say, well, you know, just switch to that brand. Well, I'm, I'm trying to create the formula right? That's, that's what my processes has been this whole time. My philosophy this whole time has been, I want to create a repeatable formula that 
Yeah, when you're when you're hit with something, you could move a little to the left and move a little to the right. But for the most part, you have a formula that when the next car comes or the next project comes, like, ah, got this problem, bam, do this. No, it works with the rest of my stuff. Good. Keep going. So, like, if I already knew that I had a rust converter that changes the primer and I could do that and then possibly epoxy over that if I want to, just so it's sealed, and then... Uh, you know, add the build primer and then, you know, pretty it up after that. That would be freaking awesome. I haven't seen that yet, at least not in my research. So, uh, and one of the few people that has stuff like that, well, I'm sure a lot of people do, but few people that advertise it where you get access to it and find it easily is Eastwood. So, um, but I don't think, I know you could top coat their stuff, but can you only top coat it with their stuff? Like, kind of have to read the TDS sheets and I haven't done that yet. So I was kind of expecting to get further on this and uh, I'm not. So in any case is what it is. So we are going to hop back to the windows and uh, figure out hopefully how to take some of this stuff apart and finish this up today and catalog it, store it call a day get some of the space back so that is uh and, you know we're closing the garage hitting the air conditioner and staying in here for a while and uh, the other thing i'll say is this tennis elbow thing that i have going on is making me almost not have one arm it's it's pretty bad the last time i had something like this it took over six seven months for it to go away and uh yeah, not looking forward to that because uh, it's pretty debilitating. I mean, I could barely, I, I can't even lift my arm to like bring a drink up like it's that bad. In fact, just faking it right there hurt. So, um, so we're going to, you know, keep plowing through here. But all that uh, scraping and shaving and sanding the roof of the van with my left hand and my right, I was switching because I was just so tired, kind of overdid it. And that was the end of that. So, we'll, we'll, we'll keep going. We're trying. Well, after all that, we found one screw, <laughs> just to give you an idea how small these are. <laughs> one little tiny screw. We found one screw in the garbage, and we found, what, five more dragging a magnet across the ground by the garbage in the sand. And so, there's probably another six more somewhere between here and there <laughs> but uh i think i want to replace those with allen's anyways because they're basically like a set screw and the phillips kind of sucks trying to get out so i'm gonna have to drill out the other ones that are uh in the frame that i can't get out and then the only thing i don't know if i need a flange so it's a screw it might not work but yeah in fact it won't work but an allen with a recessed head but I was happy just to find one and so I got a bunch of them now so I just can't believe I did that I mean there was so much crap on here and they were so small 
that I just grabbed it all up and walked out to the garbage and threw it out. It's like, ah, <laughs> what are you doing? So I got the same thing down here. I got one little micro screw on these. Uh, I figured out how I'm going to get rid, get rid of those. And on these, I got a few stuck ones. So these are stuck in there. And, uh, I think they're rusted in, so the only way out is drilling them, which sucks because I don't really want to do that, but it is what it is. Um, and then, you know, I was talking to, it might have been my glass guy or whatever, and they were saying like, well, these are probably the same exact size as the other windows that aren't in frames that pop out. And if you choose that you don't want pop-outs everywhere, you can just use the same glass and pop it in. And... They're not the same size. There's a good, off the top of my head, I'm not sure, half inch, three quarters inch difference between the glass, which still might fit within the rubber. I'm not sure, but I was like, wow, I could eliminate maybe two out of the four pop-outs and just have the rear pop-outs and not the uh, the front pop-outs. But uh, So that way, you know, you roll down your front windows and it just blows out the, the side backs. But... Uh, I don't think that's the case at this point. So I'm just going to, until further notice, I'm going to keep restoring as is. So that's what we've got going on. try to get all the little stuff, you know, just because otherwise it's like, oh, you know, it only took five minutes to do something. It's like, no, you didn't see the hours <laughs> of this bullshit going on. Luckily, this paint has pretty much had it, so it's kind of coming off pretty, pretty easy. Yeah. I'm expecting the citrus stuff to do a pretty decent job. I bought four half gallons of it, so figured I could return it. We don't use it. But this floor is probably, I would say, the hardest thing to do. So it'll be a great test. You don't have to go nuts with it, just just enough to break through. Yeah, yeah just enough to break through. Just give it a little scuff. Yeah, oh no, it's scuff. It'll just help that stuff. You don't have to do that. It's just kind of a guarantee. Oh, look. Yeah, like, yeah, it's coming right out. So I think I'm gonna Try to make this piece chrome. That's the grip? Yeah, it's kind of lower between the headlights. That look cool actually. I think it will. I've seen a few where they've done chrome on this or they've actually replaced this with just like uh, stainless steel or, or uh, polished aluminum bars like, like, like tubes, you know, where it's a little more modern looking. I think that chrome will look sharp too. Yeah. I, yeah, that's a good idea. So, since this thing is so kind of banged up in a sense, I had the guy straighten it out a little bit. Uh -huh. And what my idea is, is, and I know that powder coating, like chrome is, it's not the ultimate, like it doesn't look 100% like chrome. It's not as reflective, if you will. But, if I could do like a chrome or a black chrome and powder coating, then that means I don't have to straighten the metal more. I could use a special metal filler that will handle 400 degrees and make this thing kind of look perfect and then just bake it in the powder coating. If I had to actually chrome this, this metal would have to be perfect. Yeah. There's no way, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not paying That's someone. Too, for yeah. Yeah, I'd rather start over with something new than 
than pay the money to get this to be perfect. Because, you know, the way they do chroming, they strip it all down and do all this stuff. It's like, well, can't do that. Well, you know, the rest of the car has like a, like a red primer on it. And it seems like this either has a black primer or someone sprayed black over the blue. I can't tell which is first here. Oh, they sprayed black over the blue. Hmm. So someone had the same idea with a two-tone on the grill. Uh, Interesting. Mm -mm. So your client uh, that you had last night, he's out of town? Or so or out of state? It's, a, it's a dual group. Uh -huh. And one of them is an in-town uh, world percussionist that has like seven Grammy nominations. Okay. And one of my Grammy, Grammy nominations was with his group. Oh. And then, uh, and then he, then, then the artist himself that he's supporting is from like Sedona or something like that. So oh, okay. she travels out of town and, you know, she has to stay in a hotel and all that stuff. So last thing you want to do is like book two days and then not get everything done. So first night, I think we stopped at like six and then the second night, uh, we had to go about 9 30 and then by the time you shut everything down and get out yeah 